you know better than I do because they are buying the cars from you. <laughs> oh well. Thank you. <laughs> um, a very general question, and I don't know how to put it better, but I know that will be a question of customers. Um, you're saying that you can run Yate on Windows and on Linux. Uh, probably all of us are more Linux uh, guys uh, because of the asterisk background. Um, is there, if it would be your choice, would you use Windows or would you use Linux for a PBX? And are there any major advantages, disadvantages? A again, I know it is a very general question, but um, as somebody wants to uh, go for Yates, uh, does he have to care about their op operating system or is it, it doesn't, it, 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 it doesn't he have to care at all? Definitely it should care about the operating system and if you ask me, we are developing on Linux. We are porting on Windows. So the answer will always be Linux. Uh, now the, the, the story goes like this. To be honest, you, you can't force people to use Linux. That's true. However, if you do manage somehow to get open source with the foot in their door, it will be much better than having nothing. You can't just let the entire market to go to Microsoft. And to be honest, we won at least one contract against the Microsoft uh, live communication server. So I guess we do have to continue to support the Windows platform. And we will continue to support the Windows platform, even if, uh, if it doesn't, uh, it's, it's not that easy to the open source community. But it's, it's not much we can do about that. And of course, Linux will be always better because in terms of support, we actually have the knowledge to provide the support for Linux all the way back to the kernel. Our, our developers have been in the past developers for co really complicated Linux systems. Yeah, it is pretty much like a, not, not so complicated for, for them. So. I guess that answers the question. Okay, any other questions? Oh. Hello. Um, Hello. You mentioned the importance of software testing, and I ended up um, by the middle of 2006 with a multi-user application, which was done in, uh, uh, in Python and used Yate as the telephony engine. Um, so I had proper testing through the Python unit tests on my um, system itself, but I had no possibility to test um, timing issues or is my um, logic in audio um, possible. Is there any way you have seen to test uh, a phone system, a running phone system automatically um, with some library by emulating several phone calls and seeing how they interact with each other? Absolutely. There is a module in Yate since 2005, I believe, called, named it Call Generator. That answers the question? Um, yeah. Um, can you, uh, is, it, is it then, um, how does it work? Can you a bit explain it's, it or show it? It's, um, it, it, it is documented on the, on the website, but it's, it's pretty easy. You, you basically use the remote console to, to set up a few parameters for the call generator and you just um, trigger the call gen, call gen start and then it starts to generate the, the phone calls. And we ended up writing that module for a very good reason. In the beginning, it had only two modules. One was the Zaptel and one was the HT3. And um, at some point we actually had, um, we, we needed to test it. <coughs> so we started to use the call generator from Open HT3. Maybe some of you remember about that, maybe you don't. Uh, however, the call generator uh, had uh, several problems. It, uh, it crashes long before the 8. So we had to test somehow the, the, the Yate much better, so we ended up testing Yate against Yate, which is not a very good testing procedure, but it's the highest we can go when we test the, the, the call loads. So this is, this is how we actually test. And we've um, we invested some money, not too much, into buying several servers, uh, which we are using uh, uh, 
at every week or so to make uh, several uh, uh, several phone calls to, to find out if we actually uh, did anything wrong and we do that extensively when we um, when we uh, make a new release it's very very important for us because we are in the high end market it doesn't really matter if uh, if a small PBX crashes or something like that but if you have like 700 phone calls going down is not going to make your, your your day better. And even though we are doing everything to make sure that the software is good enough, we still have bugs. Everyone has bugs. It's it's a fake to say that you don't have it. It's fake to say that yeah, it will never crash. It will crash like uh, any other software. This is why we added something that is called a, a software watchdog, because we have the message passing system, so we know when the modules are actually communicating between them, and we can watch when the engine is actually not working anymore. So we are uh, using the software watchdog, and in the worst case, in 10 seconds, it is restarted. Because even, even if it crashes or freezes or whatever, uh, we, still, we still need to, to be able to catch the phone calls again, at least later. And f for the same purpose, we have the load balancing system for the clustering, and we even considering of having a full backup of the system. We, we even developed for one of our customers a full backup system that allow us to not lose the phone calls while, while, uh, while the server goes down. And I can make a, 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 a bit of explanation on, on that application, if you like. Anyone? Are you saying the current call isn't lost? No, it's not lost. Yes, it's possible. How? It's very easy. Basically, we've been using the Linux high availability system, and we have like two, two SIP servers, and I've told you that we have the MGCP supporting it, and we have two SIP servers, and we have two MGCP uh, media gateway servers. And when the phone call comes in, it goes through the signaling to the SIP server, and the, the media goes to the MGCP server. Okay? That's very clear. And we have the second servers for, for backing up the first SIP server and backing up the, the second MGCP server. Of course, it's pretty expensive to do so, but it is possible. At least we did it. And if the MGCP server goes down, because that's your major concern, I guess, uh, because it's talking over uh, MGCP with the SIP server, the SIP server knows where is the other one, the high availability system, the heartbeat system of the high avail availability system will pu push up uh, the new server. But the main problem with the new server is it's that it needs to know when the stream is coming from, where it should be sent. And it no learns that over MGCP from the SIP server. And if the other SIP server goes down, the, the, the backup SIP servers knows to, to, to get the information through the MGCP from the media gateways. So that answered the question, I guess. I know it's very, very weird, and I know it's pretty expensive, but at least it's doable, and it's doable with complete open source solutions. And, uh, of course, uh, we will probably try one day to make the clustering a bit more efficient, but right now it's, uh, it's always a matter of how much money you intend to put there uh, in order to get results. There are certain levels where it does, ma it, it does worth the trouble of going all the way there, and there are certain cases where it doesn't worth the trouble. Uh, any other questions? Well, uh, let's see what's the time. Well, my time has expired anyway, so thank you very much. Thank you, Sharon. Thanks.